Since I've been making magic content again lately, a lot of people have asked me, Boogie, I want you to help me get in the Magic the Gathering. I want to learn the rules, and I want to learn what I need to buy in order to sit down and play the game with my friends or play it online. And this is a guide to all of that. We're going to talk about the rules, we're going to talk about how to learn the rules, and we're going to talk about what I recommend you buy as a first-time player. First off, you probably want to learn the rules of the game. And I had to learn it by just playing the game and figuring out and getting taught by other players and reading that tiny little rule book that came in an unlimited starter deck, you don't have to do that. They have created an incredible tutorial inside the piece of software you're seeing on your screen right now. Magic the Gathering Arena, which is available on PC, on Mac, on Android, on iOS. Pretty much if you've got a device, you can play Magic the Gathering Arena and the tutorial they have there is spectacular. Download this software, start playing for maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and you'll have a complete understanding of the majority of the rules. Now, Magic is a very complex game. In that tutorial, they're not going to cover everything. You will constantly be searching the internet, trying to figure out answers to card combinations and rules as you're playing through the game, but they'll at least give you the basics. But this does come with a warning. Uh, Magic Arena is fantastic, and I play it pretty much every single day. But it's going to give you a lot of opportunities to spend money, and you're going to get nothing back in return. You're just going to get digital cards, not physical cards. If you decide to spend your money, I recommend you buy physical cards because at least you get something that you can physically own and collect and hold. And if you decide you're done with a game, you can sell them or you can trade them. Sometimes you're going to get a lot of expensive cards that you might sell for more cards, but you can't do any of that on Arena. Once the money is spent, it's gone. You're going to get a zero return other than just the entertainment value. And look, don't get me wrong. I'm antisocial sometimes. Sometimes I don't want to play physical magic. Sometimes it's just so much easier to shuffle up a digital deck. If you don't have somebody to play with, if you don't have someone to hang out with, if you're antisocial as well, you don't want to go into a magic shop, I understand. Digital magic is a great way to play, but you just don't get the return of physical cardboard, and I really think you should. So now you've decided you want to start collecting physical magic, and here's my recommendation. I'm showing you Amazon right now, the official Magic the Gathering store, which is fulfilled through Amazon, but I recommend you find out if there's a local gaming store in your area, because not only can you buy cards there, but you can also play there as well. And sometimes you'll spend a little more than you would at Amazon. Doesn't matter. If you are going to end up playing there, go ahead and pay a premium a little bit, not too much, nothing too crazy, don't get price gouged, but an extra 10 or 20% to make sure that you have a place to sit down and play is well worth the investment. But regardless of how you get them, my recommendation is to pick up a Commander deck, because Commander is the most popular way to play the game right now, and it's a non-rotating format. Once you bought a card for Commander, you can play it in Commander forever. Standard cards rotate. If you get into Standard, you're going to be spending new money all the time. Commander, you can buy a deck, and that's your deck. Now, I will say that these decks are designed to be played against each other. So it's a great idea to buy a few of these Commander decks and then loan one to a friend or go in with it together and then sit down and play these physical decks against one another for the best experience. Once you start uh, modifying one of these decks, once you start homebrewing, the decks become infinitely more powerful and these decks out of the box will not really be able to compete. But the reason I recommend these products for starting is because they generally have a tremendous amount of value. If you pay, say, $36 for one of these Commander decks, sometimes you're going to get cards in here that add up to $100 worth of value on a secondary market because they are staples for the format, cards that you will use in every Commander deck. And I highly recommend picking these up as your first experience to learn how to play the game in the most popular format there is. After you play these decks for a while, you're finally going to get to the point that you want to modify these decks. So I wanted to show you one of the best resources for EDH, or as we also know it as Commander, and that's the website edhrec.com. Here, if you go, you can look up cards that are popular with the Commander that you've chosen to play. Some of the most powerful combos. You can see examples of decks that people have created and uploaded to share. You can see what other Commanders are popular in that color combination, different themes, different cards you can use. I mean, it's it's just, without a doubt, one of the best resources for Magic the Gathering, period. I would bookmark this immediately. I would make sure that you never forget it. It will show you the best way to homebrew your deck. 
And don't get me wrong, there are no wrong answers. You can build a deck however you want to, but this is a good leaping off point to give you an idea of how other people are building their decks and maybe it can help you figure out what you want to put in yours. Now, once you've learned the rules, you might decide that Commander is not competitive enough for you, and you want to learn to play a more competitive format. The cheapest way to start playing again is a format known as Standard, which is a pretty great setup of the most recent cards that are currently in print, and because of those cards being currently in print, you can learn to play this format fairly cheaply and put together a constructed deck fairly cheaply. Um, the downside to standard is that these cards will eventually ro rotate. Once a year, the sets that are in standard rotate out, and you can no longer play with a lot of the cards that you might have bought just a few months ago, and that can be really frustrating for a lot of players. Another way to play the game is deck building on the spot, and we call this a limited format, where you work with a limited set of cards, and the best way to do that is booster draft. Now, it's probably best done on Magic the Gathering Arena, unless you've got, you know, six to eight friends to sit around and play with. If you only got a couple, you can sit down and open some packs and do what we call sealed, but booster drafting gives you a chance to get a larger selection of cards for a cheaper price, Go to your local game store, ask them about their next booster draft, and if you really want to skill test yourself, let's see if you can build a deck as you go on the spot and win with that. Now, if you want to build, again, 60 card decks, and you want to build them going into a tournament ahead of time, but you don't like how standard rotates, there's a few non-rotating formats. The first of which is Pioneer. This is the cheapest one to get into. And it basically has a set card pool that every time new cards get printed in the standard also gets printed into the Pioneer format. So you can build decks that are evergreen. They will never fully rotate. If you want to play with much more powerful cards, from older in Magic's history, but are a little harder to get a hold of and a little more expensive, that would be modern. But I will warn you, a lot of modern decks will cost as much as a car sometimes. Uh, so be careful if you decide to get into modern. And if you really want to spend money because you think you're Post Malone or someone like that, then you can get into what we call the legacy and vintage formats. But it's not something I would recommend in this video. If you want a non-rotating format, I think Pioneer and Commander are your best and cheapest options. And if what's popular in your local area is modern, then I would recommend building modern decks. But just go into it knowing you're gonna to need to get a lot of singles and they're gonna cost a lot of money. And those are just some of the most popular ways to play Magic. Uh, some play groups will come up with their own house rules. They will change the way they construct decks. Maybe you'll decide you want to play your Pioneer deck against a vintage deck for some reason. Maybe you want to spice things up by creating your own cube and doing draft environments from that. Maybe one Friday you and your friends will get together and just open cards from an old set and, and shuffle them up and play. There is no wrong answer. As long as your play group decides that that's how they want to play, then that's how you should play. I mean, always adhere to the actual rules of the game, but when it comes to deck construction or formats, that's entirely up to you. So that's the introduction to how to play the game. Now, we will sit down and play the tutorial one day, but I wanted to give you just a brief introduction to the game. What are you waiting for? Click right now. Go to MTG Arena in your browser. Start downloading the app right now, and I think you'll be very glad you did. Start learning the rules and join me in my favorite hobby. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I will speak with you again soon.